Hallelujah. Good morning, people of God. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us rejoice and be glad about it. For the Lord, our God, is good. He is a strong tower. My God, he is the undefeated champion. And we come this morning just to give him glory. We come this morning to set our affections on a holy God. The God who is, the God who was, and the God who is still yet to come. God, I bless your name. Good morning, woman of God. Good to see your properties on the, uh, uh, on the live this morning. Hallelujah. My God, we got Vegas in the building. God, I bless your name. Listen, I don't know if y'all are excited like I'm excited. I had started preaching to myself in the car while I was driving this morning, y'all. Woo, glory. My God, some people's waiting on Christmas and some people's waiting on Santa Claus. But baby, I'm expecting a move of God to sweep through this earth. God, I bless your name. I'm expecting that people was over here worried about everything but the right thing. God, I bless your name. As long as you are on the side of the Lord, as long as you on the winning team, you ain't got nothing to be worried about. Ooh, Jesus, God, I bless your name. As long as you are in the will of God, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, oh God. As long as your ear is tuned in to heaven, you ain't got nothing to worry about. He takes care of his own children. He ain't no deadbeat daddy. God, I bless your name. Hallelujah. 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 God, I bless your name. Thank you, God. I can't be satisfied. I don't know about nobody else's testimony and what you good with, my God. But the manner from yesterday, that was yesterday. The miracles that I seen yesterday, that was yesterday. The provision that the Lord sent yesterday, I'm thankful for, but that was yesterday. God, I bless your name. I'm waiting to see what God is doing today. God, I bless your name. I'm waiting in expectancy to see how God is going to move today. God, I bless your name. Woo, Jesus. My God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I just believe it. I don't know. I can't even explain it, but I just feel it. Hey, glory. I'm going to see a move of God. You got to know what you got to know your own life and you got to know your God. Hey, glory. My God, I I'm expecting to see God move in this season like never before. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, woman of God. Good to see you. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Good morning, Mary. Good to see you, woman of God. Hallelujah. 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 Woo, Jesus. I love the Lord. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's merciful and he is kind. Woo, Jesus. Good morning, Carrie. Good to see you this morning. Hallelujah. We got to connect. We got to connect. Hallelujah. I sent you an email last night. So please make sure uh, whoo, that you get that and get it back to me. Hallelujah. Somebody said they're having twins in 2022. I hope you only one, not me, just you. God bless. That's that double favor. Hallelujah. Good morning, Jessica. Good to see you this morning. Yes, Jesus is our protector. You are telling the whole truth. Come on. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Y'all, I am so excited. I can't take it, y'all. I really am. I just, as I was driving this morning, the Lord was just showing. He just keep laying that vision out more and more. He just keep, because I told the Lord, I said, God, if you lead me, I will go. If you keep me, I will be kept. If you provide for me, I'll be provided for. Well, God, I bless your name. And so I'm just excited. And I want you to be a part of it, okay? I want you to be a part of this move of God that the Lord is doing. He is doing a mighty work. The Bible says that the, the, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. We talked about that seed in the ground yesterday. Some people have seed in the ground. My God, but you're too lazy to go out and do the harvesting. My God. My, 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 my. My, 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 my. God, I bless your name. Woo, God, I bless your name. God, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, oh great God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My, 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 my. Glory. 
I am so excited, y'all. I literally cannot. Like, it's, whew. I feel like a little kid that can't wait till Christmas. You know, when you was little, you couldn't wait, and you just was excited about it. You done gave Santa your Christmas list. Listen, listen, I'm not talking about Santa. Santa, we, that's, that's, we not even going, we talking about Jesus. I done gave Jesus my list. He, glory, that he already had put inside of my heart. That's the thing, because he creates the desires in our heart. Lord, creating me a clean heart, renewing me a right spirit. Give me in my heart what I should desire. Give me in my heart what I should be wanting and what I should be asking of you. God, I bless your name. Oh, my God. Good morning, Monique. Good to see you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about whether it's pagan. Baby, every day is the day that the Lord has made. I don't know what it looked like at your house. But every day he gives me breath in my body. I bless God on, the, on, the, on whatever day it is. Because he's a good God. He's a mighty God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. My God. So many times we get caught up talking about it's a pagan holiday and it's a pagan baby. Every time we have the opportunity, my God, to gather. If people are there, I'm coming. Hey, my God. And the glory is with me. God, I bless your name. And I'm an atmosphere shifter. Are you an atmosphere shifter? You got to know what you know about yourself and about your God and what you carry. Because the word of God says the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead, it lives in me. Ooh, and it lives in me. My God, whoo, glory, my, 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 come on, listen, y'all, I'm excited, I'm trying to calm down because God is so good, listen, we all have an assignment, we all have an assignment, and this is the season where we need all hands on deck, when I tell you, I don't know if you have a church home, I don't know what your status is. I don't know even, but I do believe that you are not here on accident. I do believe if you have been drawn to the makeover ministry and you have been coming and, and, and maybe you just found me yesterday. I, a lot of people uh, tuned in yesterday, but if you have, I, I believe it's something in you. God has called me to train leaders. And I just believe that it's something in you that the Lord is trying to do. And he is trying to do through you in your neighborhood. Okay? Come on. I need you to double tap that screen if you're like watching on TikTok. Uh, in your family. On your workplace. God, I bless your name. We got to go out. Because see, everybody's not coming to the church. We got to go out into the highways and the byways and the nooks and the crannies. My God, you might got to pick somebody up. Come on. Whatever that thing is, I, it's time to put all hands on deck. Okay? I'm excited. Starting in January... We are getting ready to do a school of prophets. Uh, and, and the Lord gave me the vision last night. And I was just like, well, he already gave me the vision, but he began giving me the blueprint last night. And I'm so excited. I am so excited. Come on. It is something amazing that the Lord is doing. And I want us to all be a part of this. I want us all to be a part of this. Okay. Um, and so this is, this is amazing, y'all. Because your testimony has to be told. And the way I shared the gospel and the way you shared the gospel, come on. It's two different ways. That's it. Come on. And so we got to be able to get all hands on deck in this season. I am just, I'm elated. Let me help you with something the Lord blessed me with on the way. If you feel like I want to do it, but it's hard, then you're actually on the right path. If it's easy, you're not on the right path. God, I bless your name. If you're on, if it's easy, it ain't, no, my God, come on. Because the assignment is not going to be easy every day. God, I bless your name. I know you see me get up every morning and you see me hop on live at 7 a.m. But baby, you don't know what happens before 7 a.m. But I'm dedicated to the assignment. This morning I said, I can't even call my hair. Honey, I just got to let God be God because it's not about me. And if we ever get that part, then we can see more moves of God break out in the earth. Whatever I got to do to fulfill the assignment to be on time for the assignment, to show up with purpose, to do, you got to be prepared for the assignment. Come on. It is not easy. And let me help you because this one I was driving and I said, Lord, you're going to make me hurt myself. Why you keep telling me all this while I'm driving? Come on. The Lord said, if the assignment is easy, it is not, uh, it is not the assignment that I have given you. The devil gives easy assignments. That's why he told Jesus, if you bow down and you worship me, I will give you all of this. All of this was already his first of all, and he was trying to make Jesus go around the cross process. My God, come on. Do not go around the cross process. The word of God says, must Jesus Christ bear the cross alone and the rest of the world go free? Come on. Now, let me help you. The Lord even said this this morning. If your marriage is easy, it's not from God. 
I said, wait a minute now, what? Because see, they done told us about Prince Charming and Cinderella and, and, and all of these wonderful little uh, fairy tale stories. What? The Lord said, what is hard is for me. Now, I'm not talking about somebody beating you upside your head. That ain't what I'm talking about. That's, that's a whole nother thing. But I'm talking about in marriage, it should groom something in you. It should teach you, uh, it should teach you patience. My God, it should teach you long suffering, how to endure. My God, come on. It is not from God if it's easy. It'll birth a prayer life in you. See, the problem is many of you, it is from God, but you're not letting it, letting it uh, accomplish its perfect work. God, I bless your name. The word of God says that when your faith is tested, my God, that doesn't just mean anywhere, even in marriage. When your faith is tested, it has the opportunity to grow. So let it grow. Eee, glory. Oh, yes. Woman of God. Listen, Carrie, when I tell you the anointing on your life, the Lord has been blessing me about you for the last couple of days. Woman of God. Eee, glory. Glory. When it's from God, you're going to have to listen. I look back and I said, man, listen, I'm ready. I'm ready to square up with the devil this day, today, y'all. You got to like every morning, I'm ready to square up with the devil, my God, because I'm on the winning team. God, I bless your name. Come on. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, my God, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Mm, mm, mm. My, 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 my. My God. Whoo, Jesus. When the child is hard, yeah, baby, that child came straight from, because some, some of you, your child, you're like, I don't know, I shouldn't have laid with that person, and now I got this baby, and that's out of the will of God. No, baby, you right in the will of God. You are right in the will of God. Somebody said they need help. I just promise you, I believe if you stay right here, God's going to bless you this morning. My God, I believe he's going to speak right to your situation. Come on, not by power, not by might, but only by the Spirit of God. If it's easy... It's not from God. It's not from God. God, I bless your name. It'll birth a worship in you. It'll birth a prayer life in you. My God, it'll, it'll put some oil on your life. God, I bless your name. Thank you, God. My worship. My worship is for real. Baby, I'm trying to tell you about a holy God. Thank you, Jesus. He's a good God. He is a good God. Woo! Hallelujah. I love the Lord. He is kind. Hallelujah. You will have a whole testimony if you endure. My, my, my. I'm not going to pray for you because I'm trying to teach you how to put some oil on your own prayer life. But I'm going to meet you in your request. Lay before the Lord what it is that you are desiring. Lord, I need, this is what I need from you. I, I want to teach. When I, on, on the makeover ministry, I'm not, I can't, I come alongside you. And I meet you in your prayer requests. Word of God says, where two or three are gathered, there he shall also be in the midst. So he's already in the midst because we are gathering in this place. And too many people are handicapped. And that's why when we go home, we feel powerless because the people at church have taught us that you only you can only come to sister so-and-so for prayer. Now, baby, you you a believer. The word of God says, the signs of a believer, they shall lay hands on the sick. They shall cast out devils. They shall tread upon serpents' heads. And it's all you, the qualification is just that you believe God. That's the only qualification. That's the only qualification. God, I bless your name. And so I'm excited about your prayer life growing in it. And it stretches you. My God. I can't take it, y'all. I'm trying to hold it together. Jesus. Come on. Th this season of your life is putting oil on you. My God. You dealing with demons? I've been there too. I've been there. And I'm going I'm to help you. Feel free to reach out to me, but, I, but I'm going to help you. We all are. When we, when we are being delivered, everybody has to come through that washing process. You're just in the washing process. See, so I don't want us to think so so heavy of demons. Baby, they, they come. Demons, do y'all know that demons are more obedient than the people of God? Now, that is crazy, but it's true. Come on, at the name of Jesus, demons tremble and devils flee. So just start calling on the name. Just start calling on the name, but don't call on the name unless you expect it to move. My God, demons are more obedient than you sometimes. Jesus, God, I bless your name. Jesus, glory, Jesus, God, I bless your name. 
Hallelujah. May the love of God meet you in this moment. God, I bless your name. May the love of God evict every unclean spirit that's working in you right now. We plead the blood over your life. We ask that the fire of the Holy Ghost touch down right now. God, do that thing that only you can do when heaven meets earth. We match faith today, God. We ask that you set the captive free because you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above more than we can think, ask, or imagine. God, we ask that you clean the woman of God today, God. Clean her up for your glory. Clean her up for your glory, God. I bless your name. Not by power, not by might, but only by your spirit. My God, we thank you, Lord, that your blood was shed for this moment. Your blood was shed for this moment. <laughs> glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Woman of God, I just need you to praise God right now until that thing breaks. Hey, glory. I need you to praise God until it breaks. You got to obey. See, it's not everything that's going to just be done by itself. Baby, this ain't no hocus pocus. This next miracle is going to take your participation. I need you to bless God right there where you are until the rest of that thing breaks. Because see, the anointing, it destroys the yoke. It destroys the yoke. God, I bless your name. And I want you to have something on your life when you walk away. My God, we are not powerless as the people of God. We are not weak, my God. We serve a God who is all-knowing, who is almighty. He truly is the undefeated champion. He is the good father. Hey, glory. My God. My God. My God. I learned how to cast out demons. The first person I learned from who had to cast it out of was myself. Nobody laid hands on me. My God. But I told that thing, you can't have me no more. I told homosexuality, you can't have me no more. I told doubt, you can't have me no more. I told perversion, you can't have me no more. I told poverty, you can't have me no more. I told lack, you can't have me no more. I told fear, you can't have me no more. I'm coming out of agreement. To, my God. You have to learn how to speak over your own life. David said, I encouraged myself see the lord has called me to train leaders so the way I, I the way i minister may be a little different the way i minister may be a little different and you may have been under a pastor but the lord has called me to the office of an apostle and apostles my god they don't the pastors train sheep if you if your pastor is if you go to a church and you have a pastor they shame they train sheep Sheep are blind. Sheep got to be told what to do. Sheep keep coming saying, can you pray for me? Can you do this for me? Can you do this for me? That's what sheep do. Sheep got to be hooked in. Come on. If, you're, if your pastor is a prophet, prophets train sons and daughters, okay? And then apostles train kings and priests. My God, I train leaders. So when you come to me, we're going to match faith on that thing. My God, we're going to match faith. I'm not going to pray for you, but I will stand beside you and teach you how to stand in the gap for your family because y'all not going to kill me. Come on. I'm going to teach you how to stand in the gap. I'm going to teach you how to stand beside. I'm going to teach you how to pull down strongholds. God, I bless your name. Come on. Hey, glory. My God. There is an untapped power that is moving in the earth. And the people of God are sitting too dormant. We are the we, we, we the kingdom kids. We are the kingdom kids. God, I bless your name. Come on. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. My God, come on. I need you to understand what God is doing in your life. He is calling for his children to rise up. There was an army. When I tell y'all, as I was driving, God was just blowing my mind. He said, I'm calling my army. Hey, my God, I'm calling my army to rise up. I need my children to get into battle. God, I bless your name. I'm calling for them. Hey, glory. Carrie is calling for you, woman of God. He's calling for you. This ain't the season to get complacent. And get comfortable. This ain't the season. My God, this is the season to rise up. COVID is just a distraction. The injection, all that. That's just, that's just a distraction. We got greater things to worry about. We serve the God who knows all, who sees all. He already promised us that a thousand will fall at our left. And 10,000 will follow that right. That's Bible. You cannot change the Bible. If I'm a believer and a thousand shall fall at my left and you're a believer and 10,000 shall fall at my, at my right and they, the same thing should happen for you, then that, that already lets me know that there is going to be massive death in the land, but God is with me. Come on. He said it shouldn't come near my tent though. 
He said, it ain't going to come near your tent though. Come on. You have to know what you believe. A lot of times sickness can overtake you because you buy into it. You sitting up walking around talking about my diabetes and I can't do this because of my uh, high blood pressure and I can't do this because of my baby. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My God, with whatever breath is in my body, God, I bless your name. Come on. I'm going to serve him till I die, whichever way he sends me. My God. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the the shadows of death. Come on, we're here. I shall fear no evil. Come on, stop fearing things that God has given us dominion over. Stop fearing things that God has given us dominion over as the children of God. It infuriates me. I went to a church the other day and, and they're sitting in there and they was talking about the power of God. But every single person in there, they kept putting on their mask. They had gloves on. They were sanitizing the mic. Took almost took it out of the lady's hand while she was singing and sanitizing and gave it right back to her. Come on. Now that's crazy. I'm not going to serve a God who is going to send me on assignment and is not going to keep me. That don't even make no sense. We got people, ain't nobody wearing no mask in nightclubs. Ain't nobody wearing no mask in Walmart, but in the house, it is offensive to God. And I'm not going to stop saying it. Now, either you believe that God is with you or you don't. Either you believe that he is your protector or you don't. We got churches quoting Psalms 91 and getting up. It is a blasphemy to God. We, we coming into the church house where the healer is supposed to meet us, where the keeper is supposed to meet us, and we don't think he's going to keep. Yes, God. I don't know what kind of God people be out here serving. I just really don't know. He kept me in sin. We got people out here wearing, wearing masks that are scared, but these same people out here ain't wearing no condoms in the streets. Now, what kind of sense does that make? God, I bless your name. I got, Lord, have mercy. Y'all just pray my strength. Hallelujah, because I'm excited. I am. I promise I'm going to see a move of God. I told God, I said, Lord, wherever you send me, I'm going. And the Lord is calling for a people to rise up, take their authority back. The government ain't our boss. The word of God says that the government rests upon his shoulders. Okay? It don't run you. Listen, I need us to hold tight to what we believe about God. I come to encourage your faith. Make sure you meet me every morning right here at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay? I don't know what time that is where you live, but meet me right here. Because if, if it is in your heart to meet me right here in this place, it's because God has called you to be a leader. He has called you to the front line. My God, come on. And so when you think about a soldier, soldiers are not, uh, they can't be, they have to leave their family behind sometimes, but God watches over the family. My God, come on. They got, they got, they got to do whatever they got to do. They, they, they don't come with a thousand excuses. They put on the uniform that is given to them. They fulfill the assignment that is given to them. My God, they don't have a lot of back talk. They can't keep saying, me, I'm hungry right in the middle of battle. Come on. Bullets is flying at your head. You tell me, I need a snack. I, come on. You got to learn how to fast. You have to learn how to pray. My God, you got to know how to use your weapon. You got to know which weapon to use at the right time. You got to learn how to take a punch. You got to know how to bandage your own wounds up. Come on, people of God. It is time to get on the battlefield for the Lord. Hey, glory. God, I bless your name. It's time to wash our hands. It's time to wash our hands. I don't know if you've been following. You might be new to the Makeover Ministry. Make sure you go back. Check out my YouTube channel. It's called Makeover Ministry. I want you to check out. There's a message called Purify Yourself. Because God is not just calling you to do your assignment, but he wants you to do it with clean hands. We got too many people in pulpits that are preaching the gospel and they're going home and they're doing everything but loving God behind closed doors. They cheating on their husbands, cheating on their wives, beating their kids. They ain't praying. They ain't in their word. My God, but they want to stand up and 
they want somebody to reverence them. God, I bless your name. Come on, people of God. We gotta do this with clean hands. If no, you didn't, you didn't, you wouldn't have ate a meal if you seen somebody sit up and, and go outside and change a tire and then come in and cook your turkey without washing your hands. That's the same thing that is going on in pulpits. People is getting up in pulpits, they getting on lives. Come on, they smoking weed, talking about they oh God said we can do this. He said, I will have no other God before me. It is a God. We're not even here to argue about it's natural. The tree in the Garden of Eden was natural, and the Lord still said, don't take part in it. My God, he is your peace that surpasses all understanding. My God, come on. We, 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 at this point, it's time to take everything else off the throne of your heart besides God. He. Some of you, it's time to come and submit. It's time to come under. It's time to get your gift pruned just a little bit so that you can be released. My God. He. Glory. You can't be in deliverance ministry and you still need deliverance. Come on, I need you to get delivered from some things. Now, you do have to stay in deliverance because weapons form. Deliverance is the most persecuted. It is the most persecuted ministry. Because not only are pastors, they, they operate a lot in salvation. Uh, and prophets, they operate in deliverance. And, and apostles, they, they operate in, in, in release. So after you have been saved and then you've been delivered, it's time to be released into your assignment, okay? And so we, we want to go up the ranks properly, though. We're being released without the deliverance. No, baby, I got to take the sword. You got to be willing to allow someone to take the sword to you. And the word of God is the two-edged sword circumcising the flesh from the spirit. God, I bless your name. <sighs> My God. He said, do whatever. See, that, that's, that ain't, that, this probably ain't for you. If, you. if that's how you feel about it, it ain't no do whatever and don't do it in excess. That's an excuse. That is an excuse. No, it, that's, not, that's not the way that God wants us to do this thing because you don't have a real testimony. Let me help you. You don't have a real testimony if you're saying, oh, I can smoke weed, but don't do it in excess. No, you want to have an excuse. He said he is your savior. You're not allowing him to save you. Why do people smoke marijuana? Let's go back to the very first time you smoked it. You, you nine times out of ten, you were having a moment. And somebody, somebody somewhere, somebody somewhere was doing a little something. They had some and they offered you the best thing that they had. Nine times out of ten, that is how marijuana is introduced. You was having a bad day or you was having a bored day. Either one, a bad day or a bored day. And somebody that you knew introduced you to it. You tried it. You might have liked it. You might have not liked it. But either which way, then over time, you go to, you begin to run to that thing. You begin to run to that thing. Oh, I just do, even wine. Oh, I just smoke. Oh, I just drank a little wine on the weekend. Uh, I just do a little this. I'm just trying to relax my mind. Okay, I hear you. I'm just trying to relax my mind. Well, he is the great mind regulator. So you have to let him be your mind regulator. And then as you continue, as you continue to go on and you have started this trend where you go to weed or you go to wine or you go to women, before you look up, first you just do it when you want to do it. Now you got to do that thing whenever it calls your name. And now you don't have it, but it has you. Hey, my God. And then the Bible says the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. If you want to know if it's truly from God or not, let's think about how much money you have spent down through the years on marijuana, on weed, on women, on whatever that thing is that's still calling your name. It's a thief. You could have done built three houses and put two kids in college. All the money that we have spent on things that are not of God. But when it comes to sowing into the kingdom of God, we want to serve God with just giving him a little tip. But you done gave your weed, the weed man, you done put his whole college, his child through college. But we want to tip God when we come in a sanctuary. We want to worry about, well, if I don't want to sow into this ministry because I don't know where the people put the money. You don't know where the weed man put the money and you've been sowing into his kingdom. My God, come on. I want us to understand what God is saying in this moment. He wants us to be free from every addiction, every stronghold. You do not have a testimony if you're still smoking weed. I'm sorry, you don't. Not in that area. I'm not saying now you may have overcome some other things, but he wants to bring you all the way through that thing. He wants to, he wants to be your God. Weed is a God. 
The word of God says narrow is the way to, to the kingdom of God, but broad is the way to destruction. So if sometimes you get to the place where you're like, I don't really know if this is a God thing or not, put it on that scale. Are, is everybody doing it or just a few people doing it? We got everybody smoking weed. They got weed leaves on everything. Now that I'm talking about it's, it's good for the children. It's a medical thing. And I'm not saying that it wasn't first intended for medicine, but now we're not smoking. When you smoking and you sitting back on your couch, first of all, you're not using that for medicine. Second of all, the word of God says, if you are sick, if there are any sick among you, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially, however, this, if there are any sick in you, call for the elders of the church. Lay hands on the sick, my God, and they shall recover. So we got to understand that God has given us a way, but there is an excuse. If you're still smoking weed, cigarettes, blunts, blacks, and whatever else things you're still smoking, it is an excuse. And it is on the throne of your heart. Because when you come, you cannot be obedient to God. The word of God says you cannot have two masters. This is why you cannot be obedient to God because you're obedient to whatever you're rolling up. Whenever it calls you, you come. Hey, my God, come on. Whenever it, 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 it drags, oh, you, you will borrow some money from your baby mama to try to get you a blunt. Come on. This thing is real. It is a stronghold on the minds of the people. I want you to be free. I don't want you to serve a God of freedom and you're still bound and you're still in chains. Jesus. My, 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 my. My, my, my. I want us to be free for real, y'all. It's time out for preaching the gospel. You don't even believe in it. You don't believe in it. If you're still struggling and you don't want to be free, you don't even believe the gospel that you are that you are preaching. The word of God says Jesus Christ came to break the power stronghold to break the power of sin, to break the power. The power has to be broken by coming to God and say, Lord, help me. First, you have to admit your repentance will be your deliverance. My God, come on. You're, I'm, this, this was my thing. When I was sick, some of you know my testimony, some of you don't. I was paralyzed on my whole left side and waist down off and on for three years. I had a crippling pain that would hit my back. I lost my entire memory, okay? And so I'm going through all of these things and I remember it laying in the bed one day and I got tired and I said, God, I don't know. I'm tired of going to church. God, I bless your name. I'm tired of going to church and singing about, oh, he's a healer. Oh, he's a healer. He's a good God and he's a way maker. Oh, and all of these things. I'm tired of saying those things. And I ain't never seen you did a miracle before, God. And I'm not talking about a pill. Oh, I took the pill and I was healed. No, baby. I'm talking about cold turkey. I was on 10 milligrams of Oxycontin. No, I was on 40 milligrams of Oxycontin a day. I was on nine other medications and I cold turkeyed all of it. And I said, God, if you are still doing miracles, this is why I'm telling you, I'm trying to increase your faith. I thank God for the hard seasons that I had to go through. My God. I said, God, if you're still doing miracles in the earth, do it in me, God. And I was willing to go through whatever I had to go through to see him do that miracle because I needed to see that God was still doing what he said he was going to do in his Bible. My God, I woke up on day one and I couldn't walk and the pain was still in my back and my legs wasn't working and I had to just keep on laying hands on them and I had to keep rubbing them and I had to keep saying, by his stripes, I am healed. And I kept rubbing that back and I said, by his stripes, healing was made available and I had to learn to pull on heaven. I'm not going to pray for you. I'm going to teach you how to pull on on heaven for yourself. My God, come on. I had to lay hands on that back and I said, now nah, by his stripes I am healed. And see, my family, they had gotten used to me always saying that I was uh, uh, that I was in pain. And so when they would come around me, my God, they began to say, oh, uh, uh, are you in pain today? And I had to change my words because the word of God says, the word of the Lord says that life and death is in the power of your tongue. And so, yes, my body was in pain, but I had to teach my thoughts to obey Christ. And I told him, I said, listen, I'm uncomfortable, but I'm believing God right now. My God, I'm believing God. On day two, I got up. God, I bless your name. And when I woke up, my pain, the pain was still in my body. And I kept laying hands on myself. Day three, I woke up and the pain was still in my body. And the Lord said this to me. He said, how do you know? How do you know that I've healed you? You won't even get up and try it. <laughs> How do you know 
God, I bless your name. How do you know that I've healed? You won't even get up. Faith without works is dead. If you have a prayer life with no action, you're not praying, you're reciting poetry. Faith has to work with, you cannot say, I believe God for this, that, and the third, and you ain't put no action with it. God, I bless your name. And so I began to roll myself out of the bed instead of getting somebody to help me and carry me. I had to roll myself out of the bed and I would get myself down on the ground and I would begin to lay hands on myself and I would begin to talk to them muscles and I had to get myself in hot tubs of water and I had to get me some praise and worship music because you got to set your atmosphere and make it conducive for a miracle because I don't know when God is going to trouble the water, but I'm Wait in expectancy, God, but you're going to do it on my behalf, my God. And so day seven, I got up, but when I tell you, I still wasn't healed. On day eight, I got up, God, I bless your name. And I said, I cried out to God with everything in me. I said, God, I'm 34 years old. I got two children, God. It's more life in me, God. If you do it in me, hey, God, I bless your name. If you do it in me, God, I'll tell everybody with ears to hear, God. If you do it in me, God, I will serve you, God, I bless your name. Come on. See, sometimes God wants to know, will you? wait on me and he's building endurance and you keep getting out of the race and you keep turning back and you keep going back to those things that he has already set you free from because he's teaching you long suffering in your own process so that you can tell somebody my my healing wasn't instant but he did it for me we live in such a microwave generation. The word of God says they lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That doesn't mean it's going to happen right in that moment. You have to learn how to contend for your own miracle. Jesus, on day eight, I cry out to God. I said, God, do it in me if, you, if you're still doing miracles. I was desperate and I was determined. This is what I told God. I said, your name is on me. Your name is on me, God. Hey, your name is on me. So if you don't do it, it, it looks bad on you, God. Because I'm telling people that I'm believing you for a miracle. Jesus and I'm not going back to the medication and I'm not going back to all of those things and so God if you don't do it I'm going to be stuck in this situation I'm waiting on you do not be the man at the pool of Bethesda sitting at the poolside 38 years excuse after excuse of why you can't be healed excuse after excuse is why you can't be do what God has told you to do you got me messed up we serve a God who is able to do all things but fail when do we believe that God is truly who he said that he is and he is truly doing what he said that he is going to do God I bless your name I'm trying to help us understand on day 10 I woke up and I still wasn't healed my God but God was building faith in me through the process on day 11 I woke up and I still wasn't healed but I kept laying hands on myself I kept commanding those muscles now y'all gotta line up in the name of Jesus Glory, you got to line up in the name of Jesus. God, I bless your name. I kept on, I kept on, I kept on, I kept on. Come on, on day, on, on day, on day 13, I woke up and I still wasn't healed. But when I tell you on day 14, whoo, God, I bless your name. On day 14, when I went to roll myself out of the bed like I had gotten used to doing. Hey, God, I bless your name. My legs worked. Hey, glory. My legs worked. God, I bless your name. And I've been walking ever since. My God, when I walked back in that doctor's office, God, I bless your name, the doctor said, oh, I guess that last specialist that I sent you to help. Baby, that specialist didn't help me. My God, this healing came from the doctor, great physician, the doctor that made the doctors. God, I bless your name. I want you to learn how to contend for your miracle because God is trying to birth something in you. Everybody's miracle ain't easy. If your miracle is not easy, it's because you are a leader. Leaders have to lead by example. You got to be able to tell somebody. When you go and lay hands on someone because you have went through your pressing season, that is why it breaks. Because you went through, and this is why the pressing is so hard. Because everybody that's going to get delivered uh, under your hand through the power of God, they're being delivered in that moment of time that you are pressing. That's why it's so hard because you're not just pressing for yourself. You're pressing for everybody that's coming behind you. You're pressing for every person that you're going to pray for that's going to be healed. You are pressing for every person that you're going to pray for that's going to be delivered. My God, come on. Stop being so selfish and see what God is doing in the earth. I love God. He's good to us. 
It bursts up. That's why you have, when you truly have, that, that's why it's nothing that God, if God asks me, whatever he asks me for, I'm just willing. Because I've seen him do too much. I was homeless. He provided for me. I lost my children. I've seen him be a lawyer in the courtroom. My God, I've seen him be a great defender. He has fought every battle. This is why I don't have to fight my battle. I don't have to, I don't have to cuss nobody out. I don't have to argue with nobody. Listen, I have seen God settle scores on my behalf. All I do is tell him, listen, I'm praying for you. And I ask God to have mercy on you. Because the word of God says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. When do we truly believe the word of God? I come to increase your faith on today. I need you to believe the, I mean, why serve a God that can't really heal if, he, if we're calling him the healer? Why serve a God that can't really deliver if we're calling him the great deliverer? This just doesn't make any sense. Come on. I want you to believe God for real. Through whatever situation that you are in, I need everybody to hold tight. I, I, I don't care what it looks like. If your marriage is ugly, if your kids is crazy, if your health is going to the left right now, we're going to hold tight. And we are in a season where God has got to do a miracle because we have some crazy situations. But you got to be willing to stay in agreement with the miracle. Do not keep getting out of line because the line is long. Mm, mm, mm. He's building something in you. When, you're in, when your faith is tested, let me give you Bible because I don't want you to think she's just on her hollering. No, I'm telling you the, the, the testimony. Let's go to James. James uh, chapter one and verse two says, Dear brothers and sisters, when trouble of any kind, hmm, when trouble of any kind comes your way, God, I bless your name. When trouble of any kind comes your way, God, I bless your name. Consider it an opportunity for great joy. Wait a minute. We have been taught this thing wrong. Because we wake up hollering about, oh, the devil's busy. The devil's acting up. Oh, we get sad when trouble comes. We have learned faith the opposite of how the Lord desired for us to learn it. The word of God says, when trouble comes your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, when your faith is only a test, it's only a test. Whatever that situation you in right now, I don't care if it's bills, baby daddies, I don't care if it's baby mamas, I don't care if it's courts, lawyers, I don't care, none of those things. What, the season that you are in right now, that hard thing, get that on your mind, that it's only a test. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has the chance to grow. Your endurance has the opportunity to grow. So let it grow. Let them talk about you. So let them misunderstand you. So the proof will be in the pudding, but you have to learn to do it God's way. You're, we're wanting God-like results, but we want to do it the worldly way. That's why a lot of your homes are not ending up well because you won't even marry the person. You keep laying up. I don't know if this is the right person for me, but you know it's the right sex partner. Now, what kind of sense that make? What kind of sense that make? I don't know if she's for the right one for me. I, keep, I hear men say that so often. I'm going to tell you what my husband said. He said, if you don't know, she's not it. Because when you know, you know. And I've heard so many men say that that have married their wives quickly. It don't take... Listen... It don't take no man no four years to find no to buy a car. When he go on the car lot, he be like, do, 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 do. bam, that's it. That's that one. That's it. That's the one. So women, you're you're better than a car. Stop letting people test drive you. Stop letting people oh uh, test drive you for five years to see if you the one. Putting mouths on your body, on your mind, your emotions, your heart, baby. I need you to understand. I, I don't, I've been married several times. Y'all know that if you've been following the makeover ministry and every single one of them, when they see me, they say, yeah, that's, that's it. So I need you to understand when it's right, it's right. You just connect. There's something that you just know. Even your church home, you don't pick your pastor. You don't pick your pastor. Hey man, I thank God you proposed to your wife five days ago. In fact, no, you said you proposed to your wife in five days. Yes. Okay. My husband proposed to me in three. That's what I'm saying. When you know, you know. Listen, you don't pick your own pastor. You might say, how, you, well, how would you say I don't pick my own pastor? Because you don't pick your own mother. 
and you don't pick your own father. How do I know it's my pastor? Because the words connect. Their words give life to me. That when some, when they speak, my baby leaps. See, the Holy Ghost in me, it leaps. God, I bless. It's a response that happens. My God, it's like Adam. He said, Adam said, she's bone of my bone. She's built like me. And she is flesh of my flesh. She's filled with what I'm filled with. Come on in the room. See, that's my thing. I, I struggle finding uh, that person who was built like me and who was, who was structured like me. When it comes to ministry, everybody can't roll with me. If you got low faith, I can't. I mean, we can, I'll minister to you, but you are not going to be in my close circle because we operate on faith over here. If the Lord tell us to get up and go and we only got $50, then we getting up and going with that $50. But if you're an analytical person, I mean, wait a minute, let me see how many miles that is. And let's see. Okay. How much? Okay. Let's see. $50. That's not going to get us there. No, see, you, you you operating on the wrong principle. We operate on faith. That was James chapter one and verse two. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, when, when you have trouble of any kind, when it comes your way, consider an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has the chance to grow. Verse four, so let it grow. So let it grow. So let it grow. When your faith is tested, when your faith is tested, your endurance has the opportunity. It has the chance to grow. So let it grow. For when endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect. Mm, mm, mm. When you have allowed it to work in you and not against you, you've allowed it to work for you. You understand that that person that's cussing you out, they're only training you to pray for your enemies. Mm. Come on. You're, 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 they're training you to pray for your enemies, but you're looking at all they hating on me. No, you're trained. You're being trained in how to be rejected and still show up in purpose. Hey, my God. And when you allow endurance to be made perfect in you, God, I bless your name. You will be, you, when you allow in, endurance to be developed, you will be perfect. The word of God says you will be perfect. I know they told us. We got people out here hollering, you know, in pulpits. It, it makes my soul cringe every time I hear a preacher say that, you know, nobody's perfect. Well, then I need to go to another church because I need to see somebody striving for perfection. I need to see somebody that is saying, no, I'm not settling for nobody's perfect. No, I, I'm struck because the word of God said I could be. Because the perfect spirit of God, it lives in me. God, I bless your name. Perfect means mature. So what that means is that, that it, when the Lord speaks, the Holy Ghost, when he speaks to you, when he leads you, all you have to do is follow his instruction. As you follow his instructions, that is how he makes himself perfect. He said, in your weakness, I will be your strong tower. In your weakness, my strength is made perfect in you. You have to be willing. I'm not sitting under a leadership where they say nobody's perfect. That's because why? Why? Because I know they got a lot of secret sin in their life. That's the, that's the AKA. Nobody's perfect. That means you got AKA secret sin in your life. Or, or I'm going to give you a look. I'm going to give a couple people a look out. Or you have heard that said your whole life. So you're just repeating it, but stop saying it because it's not Bible. It's not Bible. You will be perfect and complete needing nothing. You will be perfect and complete needing nothing. My, my, my. When you allow endurance to grow, we all need endurance. This is why we need endurance. And these kids don't have it and the grown-ups don't either. We have to have endurance because the word of God says only those that endure till the end shall be saved. I know they told us uh, that, that you just say the prayer of salvation, just say these little things and you are saved. That is not even accurate. The Bible says only those that endure till the end shall be saved. The Bible said he is in adding those to the church daily that are being saved. Okay. That are being saved. God, I bless your name. So we need to learn how to endure hardness. The word of God says like a good soldier. 
Okay, we just talked about those soldiers when we got started. Endure, learn to live through the hard situations without being a crybaby all day, every day, without quitting the job all the time. Quick, if you, this is how I know that you've not allowed endurance to work perfectly in you because you got a thousand jobs. You have no endurance. You just quit every time. My boss got me messed up. No, you have no endurance. Mm, mm, mm. You have no endurance. Your boss is supposed to have you messed up because that's where you're supposed to develop your prayer life. This is how you know if you got real weight on your prayer life. The Lord keeps allowing all the people to come against you. You go home, you pray about that thing. Come on, and if you see that thing move, it's a little oil on your prayer life. You just got a little oil on your prayer life. Come on, people of God. Come on. Not cussing them out. Not cussing them out. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, woman of God. I will touch on that. Not cussing them out, but praying until that thing moves. I'm trying to tell I have seen this work. I worked at a boutique one time, and the man had me. I was the manager of his boutique, and he stole. I had a lot of my clothes in there. He stole. He stole a lot of my clothing, y'all. And when it was time to go, I was like, man, that's crazy. I said this. I said, okay, that's all I'm going to tell you. I said, uh, uh, uh. And he said, what? He said, why uh, why, why would you say, uh, 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 say what you gonna say, woman of God, he was mocking me. I said, actually, and this is the honest to God's truth. I said, actually, in this moment, I just said, Lord, have mercy on him when you deal with him about me. Because the word of God says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. So I had to just leave it at that. He still left me on his case, on his uh, phone call list, because I was his manager. So he still had me on. He never removed me off of the list, off of his uh, safety alarm system. And so when I tell you, that man ended up having a fire and two break-ins in one year off the back of, of stealing from the woman of God. You got to know your authority. You, When you truly know, I, this is how I know if you, you don't have no authority. You haven't stepped into your authority because you still argue with people. Because you still go back and forth with people. My silence means I have now surrendered this battle over to the Lord. Ah! Let me help you, women of God. Let me help you. Don't go through your husband's phone. I don't go through no phones. I don't go through no phones. I let the Lord fight my battle. Because we want, you know, this is a lot of time I see, oh, well, why he got her number in the phone? You sitting up worrying about what number's in the phone, that doesn't, if, if the number, if he takes the number out of the phone, but she is still in his heart, there's still no, no, there's there. No, pray about that. Lay hands on the phone. Lay hands on your husband. Get some oil and while you're folding his underwear, bless God over them underwear and tell the Lord, don't let them take them off nowhere besides her. Men of God, if you got a wife that's doing everything but doing what's right by you, come on. You have to, especially the men, you are the head, you are the king, you are the priest of your home. You're not just the bill payer. You're not just the bill payer. God, I bless your name. You call everything subject in to order in your home. Take dominion everywhere that my feet shall tread shall be called holy ground. This is why we have to have the men truly step up. I'm so tired of everybody hopping on. Oh, women ain't supposed to be preaching. Well, you preach. That's what my husband said. He said, baby, when they hop on our time bell, women ain't supposed to be preaching. He said, I'm trying to figure out what are they doing for Christ? What are they doing for the Lord? Come on. We have to learn how to take authority. Oh, if you, I heard some man say, he said he was, uh, he went to this church. He said he went to the church and right across the street was a place where they was reading tarot cards. And he said, he asked the pastor, if this church got power, how in the world, how in the world is somebody reading tarot cards across the street and the power that, that's supposed to be uh, happening in this church, it should sanitize the whole block. And he said, well, you know, uh, you know, we, me and him have an understanding and an agreement. No, your prayer life should make people move. I know my, listen, I'm trying to tell you, I lived in an apartment one time and I moved in and a neighbor smoked so much weed. They got up every morning at 5 a.m. and smoked so much weed. I was high by seven o'clock. So I said, okay, so you want to wake up and let off your sweet aroma. <laughs> Baby, I woke up at 5 a.m. I turned on my praise and worship music and I began blessing God with everything I had in me. And then next door was a lady that was so nasty and trifling that she had her odor from her house came through the vents and it was just nothing like she had like five cats and dogs cats and dogs was peeing and pooping in the house baby i said everything around me the lord told me in that moment he said i'm not gonna move your mountain i'm trying to teach you how to take territory mm -hmm. i'm gonna tell you this within two months 
the people upstairs moved and the lady next door moved. And not only did the lady next door move, but she left everything behind. She left a 60 inch TV on the screen. She left everything in the hole that if you would, if I wanted anything, I could have went next door and got it. I'm trying to, this is why I will not handicap you. I'm not going to do it. I'm not saying that I won't strengthen you, but I'm not going to handicap you. We've been, we've been too handicapped. Oh, you only can come up here for prayer and cry on my shoulder. No, straighten up and command the thing to happen in your life. So let me touch this. Um, Erica, you put that on the screen about once saved, always saved. That is not a real doctrine. Once saved, always saved. No, because the word of the Lord says that you have to endure to the end. First of all, that's the first part of it. You got to make it all the way through the journey. You can't keep getting off the battlefield. You can't keep doing this, that, and the third, meaning you have to, uh, 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 even in your sin, let me say this, even your sin cycles are ordained by God. OK, that means the Lord knew you was going to smoke weed, but then he gave you a, somewhere there because he wanted you to have a testimony because he allowed it. I didn't say he wanted. Let me change that. He, he allowed it because he, he knew that you would have a testimony. But the problem is we're not taking the exits. We're not taking the exits. God, I bless your name. What does that mean? That means when the Lord sends somebody and they preaching about marijuana, it's time for you to take that exit. Uh, when he puts it in your heart, it's time for you to take that exit. My God, come on. We're not taking the Even Even with a, a marriages and people are cheating and stuff, the Lord sends a word for you to take an exit. Come on. He, he knew that you were sleeping with somebody that you didn't have no business sleeping with. And maybe this is somebody's exit today. Exit today. Come on. He, he said, okay, I'm going to use that for my glory, but you have to be willing to take the exit and this is why divorce is a ministry of grace the lord allows divorce he hates it but he allows it because no good thing will he withhold from those that diligently seek him and he puts some people in marriages with some people in a marriage with someone and we, we love saying oh be up be equally yoked that ain't sometimes be equally yoked but do what god says all the time Okay, that's what I want you to know because the Lord told Hosea marry a prostitute and she was not equally yoked. But there came a time when she took the exit. There came a time when she took the exit. God, I bless your name. Take the exit, man of God. Take the exit. This is an exit for somebody. Whatever you're doing that's not right, the Lord is going to allow the grace to, to, to let your wife still stay. But if you go past this moment, it's not going to end well. God, I bless your name. It's not going to end well. We have to be willing to take the exit. So what happens when you, you gave your life to the Lord at a young age and you bless God and all those things, then you went out, you had the prodigal son experience. But if you don't take the exit and you stay out in the wilderness, no, you cannot go to heaven with sin in your back pocket. You cannot do it. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 says, do not fool yourself. Baby, I know you can sing good, you can pray, preach, and prophesy, but do not fool yourself. Those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's just, he said, many will come to me on the day of judgment. They will say, I prophesied and I cast out devils. And he said, I will say to them, turn away from me. You worker of iniquity, I don't even know you. But God, I prophesied, baby, the gifts and callings are without repentance. The Lord allows you to, to do all the things because he still has a word that needs to get to his children. And because some people are sitting too timid at home, he will use somebody with dirty hands to deliver the message so that the people can get the message. But at the very end of the day, that don't save you. Your gift don't save you. Mm, mm, mm. You got to know him for yourself. And when you know him, you want to work for him. When you truly know God, you want to work for him. Come on. I don't know what's the big place in your city where people, everybody want to work for. But when you truly know God, I mean, for real, and the pardon of your sins, you want to do the assignment that he has placed in you. You want to work for God. You want to see people saved. You want to see people set free from the very things that you were bound by. God, I bless your name. Mm. 
Okay, so somebody said, what's my take on secular music, 70s music? I don't know the difference between 70s, 80s, and blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I really don't. But what I will say is this. Either who who sat down and gave the lyrics for the song? Because we can say that a lot of times we're like, you know, oh, I like to listen to old school music. It's just as simple. Me and Mr. Jones got a thing going on. As we lay, that's talking about adultery and fornication. So let's not, let's don't get caught up. Let's, let's always sit down and examine who gave that person the vision for this song. Who gave that person the vision for this business? Who gave the person the vision? Was it God? Was it the spirit of God? Or was it the spirit of the enemy? God, I bless your name. Come on. Uh, who sat down and gave the inspiration for this situation? Okay. All right. Let me give you some Bible. Somebody say, how do I feel about alcohol? I don't really have a feeling about it, but I'm going to give you what the Bible says about it. Let's go to Galatians 5 and 19. Galatians 5 and 19 says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, Okay. When you follow the temptations, the knock on your door from the devil, when you follow that, when you want to know, am I following the spirit of God or am I following the devil? This is how you know that you're following the devil because many are being deceived. The word of God says there's a strong delusion that is going out in the land. God, I bless your name. When you follow the desires of your sin filled nature, the flesh, the results are very clear. These are the things that happen if you know you're following a sinful desire. Is it a desire that came from God or is it a desire that came from the devil? This is how you know. You, you'll be operating in sexual immorality. Sexual immorality means having sex and you're not married. Having sex to uh, uh, the same sex, homosexuality. Having sex with yourself, masturbating. Because sex with yourself is, is not, that ain't of God. Because he designed sex for two people, a husband and a wife. Okay, and many of you are like, but dang, I'm tired of being single. Well, you got to get out and do your God assignment because when you are a child of God, you nine times out of ten are going to meet your spouse doing your God assignment. But if you're not doing your God assignment, you can't meet your spouse. Hey, my God, you got to be at the right place at the right time. The Lord's going to allow you, but you can't. They, I mean, I, I've heard people meet their husband at home and their wife at home because they was the pizza man or they was the cable man. My God, but at the very end of the day, we got to do our part. We have to do our part. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurities, lust-filled pleasures, idolatry, sorcery. Sorcery, is, that, that definitely falls under the case of marijuana and any other mind-altering drug or substance. Hostility, quarreling, jealousy, Oh my God, I'm going to help us with that. Jealousy, outbursts of anger. Did you know outbursts of anger is on the list? Outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness. So that's just alcohol. Drunkenness. God, I bless your name. Drunkenness and other sins. Drunkenness, wild parties and other sins like these. That's also fraternities and kickbacks and all of these things wild parties and other sins like this let me tell you again as i have before anyone living this sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of god you can't go to heaven like that and i know they told us that we could just get up because that's what when i first read that scripture that's the scripture i was delivered from i wouldn't nobody laid hands on me nobody coughed and told me come out devil none of that baby i read this i said i'm not going to heaven I'm sitting up gay, masturbating, watching porn, going to strip clubs, drinking, uh, smoking weed, dressing naked, talking crazy to people. I'm going to hell. I know I go to church, but I'm going to hell. I said, God changed me right there in my living room. Nobody was there to lay hands on me. Nobody had to leave me. I ain't have no prayer of salvation. I said, help me, God. Change me today. Because I just read in this Bible, I'm not going to make it in. And if I don't have time to say, oh, just do it tomorrow. I'm going to let God bless me tomorrow. What if you don't have tomorrow? And I was, I was actively in a relationship, married, but not in the Lord did not, the, the Lord did not um, put his stamp of approval. But in the world standard, I was married to a woman living in her house and she was paying the bills. But I got delivered. And when she came home, I said, girl, I'm going to tell you, I got delivered today. Because <laughs> nobody don't need, nobody need, you don't need anyone's permission for you to be delivered. You don't need nobody's permission to be delivered, okay? Come on. Galatians 5 and 19. 
through 21 is the verse that I just read. I need us to understand this thing. This is a real situation. Let me touch on this for a second. Jealousy. Because jealousy is on the list. I was having this conversation just yesterday. Jealousy. What is jealousy? Jealousy is is and let me see let me when did i write it down in this notebook i hope i got the notebook that i wrote it in because it's gonna bless you because it show sure bless me yes god i love the lord he's good to us jealousy is failure to perform okay unwilling to change all right mixed with self-disappointment and regret that equals jealousy break it down woman of god let me understand what you're saying we have spiritual parents that are jealous of uh or we have natural parents or uh, biological parents that are jealous of spiritual parents why y'all jealous? y'all y'all close when the truth of the matter is if you were spiritual they would not need a spiritual parent my god so because you fail to perform because you're not doing what needs to be done now you disappointed in yourself you mad at yourself now you you got regret and now you jealous of the spiritual parent my god because they're doing what needs to be done we have we have uh, uh in families come on we have uh biological parents that are mad at the step parents you mad at the step parents because they step in when the truth of the matter is if you didn't step out you would still be in come on so it is just failure to perform unwillingness to change mixed with self-disappointment and regret and now we have jealousy we got your ex mad at your next your ex is mad at your next when at the end of the day you should have just been the person should have did right if you did right you would still be here you mad because you didn't change why are you mad at this person because you didn't change you gave up your position there's no need to be jealous when you gave up your position now that is very crazy. This is just help us, Holy Ghost. <laughs> we got people that are that, that may be overweight that are jealous of those that are not overweight. How are you jealous when you all you got to do is go to the gym? So we got failure to perform. You mad because you don't get want to put the fork down. You mad because you don't want to eat right. We got people. Oh, she thinks she thinks she cute. Do she think she's cute or are you jealous? You're mad because you're not doing what you need to do. You're unwilling to change. You don't want to do it again. My God, come on. You don't want to put in the work and you don't want you mad because they put in the work and their results are standing in front of you and it's just it's a picture of what you did not do right and what you were unwilling to change because we all have the same opportunity laying at our feet. So jealousy is failure to perform, unwillingness to change, self-disappointment, and regret mixed all together in a cocktail. That's crazy. My God. My God. My God. Put that on the scale. Anybody you've ever seen jealous, put it on the scale. Weigh it out. The Lord revealed it to me yesterday. Put it on the scale and weigh it out. Come on. You got you got your, your children's father mad at your husband. Why are you mad? If you would have did right, you would still be here. Come on. You got your baby mama mad at your wife. Well, if you would have did right, we would still be together. Come on. Let's let's get let's let's get this together. Come on. I need us to understand. It's so true. I need us to understand what God is doing. Y'all, I am just excited about what the Lord is doing. Let's talk about the Still Standing Women's Tour. It is traveling and I am excited. Listen, y'all, God will always confirm his word. You may not understand it. You may not understand everything that is that the Lord is doing through you, but just obey God. When he puts it in your heart, when you give your heart to him, he creates your desires in your heart. And so the Lord put it in my heart to do this women's tour. And I'm like, okay, God, I don't really want to. I'm like, I don't, he gave it to me. Don't call it a women's conference. Call it a women's tour. And I'm like, don't call it. I'm like, okay, so whatever. Listen, I don't question God at this point. If he puts it in my heart, I, I put it into place. And so I'm like, okay, so I'm excited. It was called the Still Standing Been Through Hell and Back Women's Tour. Our first stop is going to be Mississippi. Grenada, Mississippi will be there December the 17th, 18th, and 19th. Listen. You don't want to miss it. 7 p.m. on the 17th, which is a Friday. 
7 p.m. on Saturday and 12 noon on Sunday. You don't want to miss it. It is totally free, but do bring your seed, okay? Uh, but it is totally free. We want you to come out and bless God with us. Friday and Saturday are just for the women. Sunday morning, join us, the whole family. Come on out and let's bless God. We will be at, um, we, we want to thank our, our uh Pretty Praises Boutique because they invited us. And we want to also, um, let me write that down. We also want to thank, let me, Zach's Mobile Detail because that is where we will be at. We won't be in, I don't believe this tour is, has, the Lord hasn't designed it to go from church to church. It is going to go from place to place though because everybody won't go into the church, okay? So I, I'm so excited about that. Our second stop is going to be in... Greensboro, North Carolina, and that is going to be January the 15th, the 16th, and the 17th, okay? Um, and so I'm excited about that. It's going to be 7 p.m. on the 15th, 12 noon, which is, so we'll, this one will be a Saturday, a Sunday, and a Monday. Um, so it'll be 7 p.m. on Saturday and 7 p.m. on Monday and 12 noon on Saturday. And so um, that that's what I want you to do. It's going to be good. We're going to bless God. Come on out. And uh, we want to thank M Impress beauty bar, beauty bar for inviting us okay um the dates again for grenada are december the 17th through the 19th i need you to go on to eventbrite and register it's totally free but i need you to go on there and register because we're trying to get a head count so uh i believe erica if you can get get uh north carolina up if you can buy if not today by tomorrow if you can put that up that would be a blessing so that people can go ahead and start registering for north carolina um so make sure that you go ahead and register on eventbrite you can type in in the search bar still standing tour um or still standing whatever and it'll pop up so make sure you do that it's gonna bless you if you want me to come to your city reach out to me and help me find a location i just need you to help me find a location i ain't asked you to pay for it just help me find a location and we will come and we will bless god i'm so excited now the the vision is this the vision is this um my goal i would love to go to christian businesses that were that are willing to open up their doors so if you have a business you're a believer you got a business and you got a space for us to make a little room in i don't need no whole lot of room i'm very creative our first stop is at a mobile detail shop okay listen whatever the lord send us that's where we're going and so i told god however you open the door i'm gonna walk through it so as i was reading my word last night y'all i am i'm actually working with somebody trying to work with somebody right now in houston to find a location so yes um okay amen well good if you find reach out to me all you got to do all you got to do is reach out to me and we'll connect and we'll figure out how what kind of space and talk about the budget and all of that good stuff so um definitely reach out but i was reading my word last night and as i was reading uh it was talking about how jesus went on tour jesus it said jesus uh on his tour or something like that and i was like it just confirmed that the lord was definitely blessing okay he was really talking you can reach out by inboxing me on tiktok or just comment on one of my videos and uh you know whatever comment i'm interested in reaching out about the tour or whatever comment and i'll get back with you um and we can set it up from there uh memphis i have not my lady in memphis i have not heard back from her yet to know if she has found a place but if you listen all hands on deck i'm will i'll come a couple of times listen there ain't no limit i'm excited this is what i do preach the gospel train up the people of god and and, and let the lord have his way I'm, I'm i'm excited about that so even as i was reading about uh jesus was on tour and he was talking about the women that had came along and helped and then he was talking about how one of them was his business manager and i was like lord no that is slew, jesus you got to have when you are really doing ministry you got to have somebody managing the things okay you really do because it's it, it's gonna be big and i'm excited so if you have if you have no church home we want to invite you to come and be a blessing we want you to come and join and we'll make up a transformation church be trained up for your assignment and let god do whatever he's going to do in your life people of god okay if you do if you do have a church home and you say you know i have a church home but i thank god for makeover ministry makeover ministry we meet right here 7 a.m eastern standard time monday through friday okay our sunday service for makeover transformation church is at 12 noon you can meet us there i'm excited i'm ready to put you to work i'm not ready to let you just keep watching me preach we are this when i tell y'all the vision is so amazing it is so amazing and i truly have a heart for god's people and to see god do all the amazing things that he is gonna do y'all 
I, I'm excited about it. I really am. If you, uh, if we ask you to, if you have partnered with the ministry and you would like to go ahead and put your seed in the ground for this week, if you want to partner with the makeover ministry, you said, this is blessing me. And I want to be here every morning with y'all. We want you to, um, we want you to come and partner in real life. That means don't just come and receive, but also so the word of God says that the people should, the ministry has to support itself when you, you have to sow where you eat. Okay. And so we're asking you to sow a seed of four dollars. Four dollars a day that equals twenty dollars a week. Um, you can you can sell through Cash App. You can sell through PayPal. Our Cash App is dollar sign Makeover M A K E O V A Ministry. Um, so we're asking you to, and I know that people are truly being blessed. Also, the website is being built, and I need some testimonials. So if you are willing to share a little testimony of how the Makeover Ministry has blessed you, whatever you want to say, I don't put words in people's mouth. Uh, if you if you would like to do that, please reach out to me because I need some testimonials on the website. I'm excited. Let's let God keep being God. If you have not picked up my copy of uh, my book uh, on Amazon, it's called Doll's 90 Day Devotional. It's not just for girls. I'm the doll, daughter of the living, loving Savior. So I want you to uh, definitely come on and, and be a part of what's going on. We will start our um, profit training in January. The Lord has show me a couple of people we're getting ready to do some church planting and it's gonna need i need we need people you know you are the church and that's what apostles do they train people to to be their own to be the church to be the mobile churches or whichever way god gives the vision and so i i'm, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how god grows and in, in and through you all right people of god all right so um Somebody said, what's that in pounds? I don't know what it is in pounds. Jesus, you're going to have to Google it. I don't know what it is in pounds. Listen, the Lord is so good. He is so good, y'all. That's all I know. He is so good. But definitely now, last but not least, if you're saying I want to partner with the makeover ministry, I don't want you just to sow a seed. I want you to also sow a seed. And then when you sow your seed, if it's your first time, make sure you put your email address so that I can reach out to you. Okay. So that I can reach out to you and connect with you. And I can let you know everything that's going on. Let you know when profit training is. Let you know all the things that are going on. Let you know when our leadership meetings are i want to be able to connect with you so when you put your seed in the ground make sure you put your email address once you put your email address i'm going to reach out to you send you an email once you receive the email read the email and then if you are in agreement at the very bottom i need you to fill out that little bit and send it back to me so that we can uh connect with you in the proper way all right people of god i want to know the people that are um in the ministry i don't want i can't see you i can't see your beautiful face this morning okay um, is it available online? Are you meaning what? What are you meaning? Oh yeah, the the training's online. Everything is virtual because I travel. So whichever way this thing goes, whichever way, so everything is always gonna be online uh, unless I come to your city and I'm I will still be live though, so that everyone can take part and be a partaker. All right, people of God, may the Lord bless you. May His countenance shine upon you. May He give you peace from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Be encouraged and remember that if God be for you, that He is greater than the world against you, and He don't want no cowards in his soldier no cowards in his army okay so we will stand up and do what it is that god is calling us to do have a great and prosperous weekend on purpose and i will see you all back here on uh on monday morning same place same time 7 a.m eastern standard time blessings and peace people of god i'm apostle julia of the makeover ministry and makeover transformation church